Hi everyone, Jim with CD Nova Instruments again, and today we are looking at the menu of the Model 43i Q SO2 analyzer from Thermo Scientific. And this analyzer, very similar to the other ones I've shown on the menus, um, where they have the calibration, data, and settings buttons on the left side of the screen. They have a home button, a back arrow button, a password lock, a status screen. Uh, if this is a green check mark, everything's okay. And if you see this red triangle with an exclamation point, then there's a status alarm. And then a favorites button here as well. You can, you can uh, jump into screens from here. So looking at the calibration screen, um, calibrate background. This is where you would do the zero adjust. Uh, it's 8.8 .8 ppb background. Calibrate span coefficient when you're running SO2 cal gas into the instrument and uh, you'll do your high point cal adjust, zero span schedule, and then advanced calibration. So if you look at the calibrate background, you can see our target background, current background 8.8, .8, and uh, calculated background. So when this instrument is, is zero, it's reading, currently reading zero right now, so if you're sampling zero error, you just simply hit uh, calibrate and the instrument will do a background adjust, so I changed it to uh, 9.5 background, just when I did the cal adjust. So I'll go back one screen, so that's the calibrate background. Calibrate span coefficient, in here we can edit the span concentration. Um, previous concentration was 842.8 ppp. Uh, there's the current span coefficient, calculated Span coefficient and then the calibrate button. So if we went in, if we were sampling cal gas and we wanted to go in here and then change our concentration, uh, we could change it to, you know, 843 if we wanted to, and then hit enter. So and there you can see it changed to 843 ppb, and now it's asking me to press the calibrate button. If I did that, it wouldn't work. It would give me an error because I've I don't have any cal gas going into the instrument at the moment. But that's, that's all you have to do <clears throat> to do the uh, high point cal adjust. Just simply go in here, punch in your, your cal point that you want, and then hit calibrate. And that will be your high point adjust. And then once that's done, the, uh, of course the span coefficient will, will adjust as well, depending how high or low you are on the, on the calibration point. So back one screen, and that's the calibrate span coefficient. We have a zero span schedule, and we can set up this instrument. It has an internal permeation tube oven in this instrument, uh, so we'd have a SO2 perm tube in here, and we can set the, the date and the time that we want that to trigger to do a daily zero check and a daily span check. Uh, currently it's disabled, so we can, we can enable it just by doing that. Disabled, enable. Uh, set the next time for it to trip. Here. date time and then commit it uh, the period can be 24 hours you can make it every hour every five hours every six hours if you want the duration if you want to, want to change it to longer than 15 minutes make it a 20 minute duration for the zero the span duration we can make it longer or shorter purge duration how long you want the gas to purge out after before it starts to sample again. Uh, total duration here shows 35 minutes. Schedule averaging time. We can adjust that to any, any seconds of average time that we wish. A little more screen. Background calibration disabled. We can enable it, disable it. Span calibration, enable, disable. And the zero span ratio. We can change that as well, make it 10 to 1, 5 to 1, whichever, whichever we choose. So we can go back. So that's the uh, zero span schedule screen. Advanced calibration. We have a manual calibration and then the calibration history in this screen. So that's the advanced cal screen. Manual cal. So we can manually adjust the, uh, the background and uh, span coefficient in here, calibrate, 
And this is a screen where you can actually reset the background to zero and one, just like we did on the i series. There was a there was a feature where we could change just simply reset backgrounds to zero and span coefficient to 1.00, and then start the calibration all over again from there. So that's that's what this button will do. Let's go back a few screens. So that's all in the calibration screen. Look at that again. Background, span coefficient, zero span schedule, and advanced calibration. And that's all just in the calibration screen. Pretty straightforward um, how to calibrate the unit. The data screen, I uh, can look at, and this is just like the NOx analyzer I was looking at earlier. You can view last, uh, view data log last hour, last 24 hours. You can use to define the data that you want to look at and advanced data setup. So view last hour, it's retrieving user log data. And it shows a, a timestamp, date time. And then this, this has got in the top column, PPB or micrograms per cubic meter. This, is, this unit's set for PPB. You can see the readings. And you can uh, scroll, scroll up and see, uh, see what the readings have been reading. And you can see where I was putting in some Calgas earlier today, 239 PPB, 400, and it should go, there's 800, that's where the high point was, I was calibrating around 842, right there, and so it's tracking all that data. So you can also go back to the top, where it says the word graph, touch the word graph, and you can see the data. Here's my Cal data, my high point, and it shows up here around that 8, 847 all the way down to the 400 range and then I started to go down in the 200 range here so this is great we can look back at the data as a graph without having to upload it into an Excel spreadsheet you can look at it right here and uh, as you're calibrating the unit so I can go back and you can do that with uh, other columns too if they were set up uh, for temperature uh, flash lamp flow pressure you could have all these columns populated and you can touch the word graph if you want to want to set that up as well it's a great feature to have, just a graphing feature. So watch what's going on as you're uh, calibrating the unit. So back, last 24 hour data, it's retrieving user log data. So this will just simply pull up the last 24 hours of data. So you'd be able to scroll down. Again, it's the SO2 column is the only one that we're looking at. And again, you can go back and there's my Cal data, but it'll pull up the last 24 hours. So it's gonna go further back and look at a lot more data as I scroll into it. And my time is moving up in the, in the left column here. Uh, view log, back up. View data log, user defined time. So we can uh, pick a date and time that we want to look at, uh, look at the data. Pick a date, pick a time as well. There's the clock and then you can save it. So we can actually select the time and date that we want to start logging data as well. Advanced data setup. There's a data logging setup. Select data logging variables. So we have lots of choices in here. Flow, pump pressure, averaging time. You can use the arrow to look further up in the table. Flow pressure module alarms, alerts, general alarm, gas mode. Lots of stuff that we can look at here. And then once you select it, you just simply hit commit changes right here to, uh, to activate it. So if I wanted to look at bench, bench pressure, I would just simply highlight it. The commit changes button went green, hit enter. So now we are looking at the bench pressure on the data login. Uh, one minute is a, a good resolution to be looking at this every, every minute of, uh, of data. Data treatment average, so you can average current, max min, so you can look at any one of those four. Um, and you can erase the data too, so if you've got too much of the data that's recorded over years and years, you don't need it anymore, you can, uh, you can actually erase all the data log records. Streaming data setup, so you can select your variables, again, bench pressure, if you want a bench pressure, again, we just hit bench pressure, commit changes, and then it go back. Uh, period in sec seconds, 
show labels and show timestamp enabled. So this is if you would be streaming the data out of this instrument, so you can have the settings on the screen as well. Streaming data setup. And that's all in the advanced uh, advanced data setup right there. Back. So that's the data screen. Look at that again. View data log. Last hour, 24 hours. User defined data and advanced data setup. The bottom button is settings. There's a lot going on in the settings buttons on these analyzers. So there's the health check, instrument settings, the USB drive if you're going to dump data, contact information, the configuration, measurement settings, communications, and security levels. Health check is, uh, is where you'll be going if you press this status alarm. You can go in and look to see if there's any alarms, and we know there is because the symbol is here. So if we go in and look at this, and we see perm oven. Now if we look at the perm oven, it's showing the uh, the low alarm on the perm oven temperature is 29 and the high alarm is 30 so we have an actual of 31.99 so it's um, I just turned this on a little while ago so it's it's in the warm-up stage and it's just waiting for this uh, oven temperature to drop down to 30.1 and then that alarm will clear and this will go to a green check mark that's all so they're also looking at gas thermistor Body thermistor, scroll down, voltage diagnostics, heater power diagnostics, so lots of different uh, alarms that they can look at in the, that was just in the perm oven. Um, you can look at the concentration, you can have concentration alarms, high, low, SO2 concentrations, uh, the bench alarm, temperature, Lamp intensity, lamp voltage, PMT voltage. PMT voltage too low, too high. You can scroll up and look at all the other things they're doing. The diagnostics, the power supply. Minus 15 volt diagnostic. Lots of stuff in here to look at just on the bench. Uh, flow and pressure for your pump. Low alarms, high alarms. Uh, peripheral support. Module sample valve, zero valve, span valve, uh, analog I.O. Looks at the voltage output channel. One, two, three, four, five, six. Digital I.O. Looks at the solenoid status. Uh, valve and pump resets. Sample valve reset, perm oven valve, zero valve, span valve, pump reset. Uh, serial number of the modules in this unit. They've gone to a very module setup, so each one is tracked by a serial number. The instrument itself, flow of pressure, the bench, digital I.O., peripherals, perm oven, analog I.O. module. And that's about it. So that's the status and alarms, the maintenance screen, we have preventive maintenance, um, we could have interval in months of when these devices need to be changed, UV lamp, PMT, PMT base socket, flash intensity, mirrors, and it goes on and on, capillaries, pump, so you can track um, an alert when this needs to be changed out so the technician will know I'm coming up on a, uh, a PMT changeout or a UV lamp changeout. It's been 12 months. It's getting up there in time, so they can, they'll be looking at changing it out. Advanced maintenance. You can reset all preventive maintenance items. So this is a great feature to have where you can track the maintenance of the instrument so that the next technician who might not be the same person can look at what's been going on with the analyzer as they as it's been uh, serviced throughout the year. You change part, you select the part, uh, mirrors, pump, uh, fix new, commit, you can make a comment, you can type a comment in here to see what happened. So the last the next guy coming out will know what was done to the instrument. And lots of stuff to go through in here. 
uh, configuration. So this analyzer shows, the yellow highlighted areas show what's been installed in this analyzer for options, uh, zero span assembly, communications board, it has a perm oven, analog I.O. board, digital I.O. board, um, instrument warm up. Security access levels. So we can get in. So they can have access levels to view only. So in, anybody can touch any of the buttons. Nothing will happen. They can. Uh, they can't accidentally adjust the cal on the instrument. Full access security password as well. So you can lock it right out. And instrument settings. You can just you can turn off the pump power. So what we'll do is we'll press that, and it just went a bit quiet. So the pump is turned off in the instrument. So if you need to service the pump, replace it. You can actually come in here and turn it off without having to uh, shut the entire analyzer down. So I can turn it back on. It should start up here in a second. There it goes. Uh, we have a display set up. We can have power save. So it just shuts down the display so it lasts longer that way, it doesn't burn up, it's quick. Alarm set points. These are low high alarm set points, your spans, backgrounds, your lamp intensity, lamp voltage set points, max mins. There's our clock. Time format. And that's the setting screen. So we have calibration, background. Span coefficient, the data screen, last hour data, 24 hours data, user defined, so the setting screen, our health check, measurement settings, communications, instrument settings, configuration, security access, USB, user contact information, and down here, we go back, we have the this takes us into that same screen where you can change the uh, security access. These are just quick hot buttons. This is the status alarms right here. So we can go in and look at what's wrong. Our perm oven is still cooling down. It's at 31.6. We're looking for 30.1. The uh, star is a, you can program these buttons to be any of the hot buttons that you want. If you want to go in quicker access to the analyzer submenus, so you can set these to uh, be accessed right from this star feature right here. So if I go back, you can just press a star, and then you can have these populated with whatever feature you wanted as well. So that's the SO2 setting up for PPP. It's still in the warm up mode, so I just turned this on not long ago. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.